When I was a little boy, we had 3 billion people in the world. Today we have 7.6, and by the time I'm an old man, we'll have 9.5 billion people. And that means we'll have three times more people on this planet throughout our lifetimes. And the question then becomes, how do we feed these people? Because we'll not have three times more natural resources to do so. So how do we satisfy that demand? That's the question of our lifetimes. We have to become more efficient in how we produce food. People around the world think that modern agricultural production is harming the environment, that we're going the wrong way, that we need to revert back to the 1950s. And that's not true. Back in 1950, we used to have 25 million dairy cows in this country. Today, we have 9 million dairy cows, but we are producing 60% more milk with this much smaller herd. That means the carbon footprint of a gallon of milk in this country has shrunk by two thirds. So in the United States today, we produce approximately 23,000 pounds of milk per cow per year. It takes about five cows in Mexico and approximately 20 cows in India to produce the same amount of milk as one cow here. Today, we are actually the envy of the world with respect to how we produce dairy and beef and all the other commodities. And if you compare, let's say, dairy milk, cow milk, to alternatives, let's say almond juice, I don't call it almond milk because almonds don't lactate. But if you compare dairy milk to almond juice, then it's true that the dairy milk has a higher carbon footprint, meaning higher greenhouse gases. But on the other side, the almonds need 17 times more water. So what is the trade-off? You reduce the carbon footprint by eating this over that, but the water footprint is now 17 times higher on the other side. So I think a big mistake we do is finger pointing and trying to identify what the worst offenders are. And I can tell you that we have gone the right direction across the animal agricultural sector for the last decade. We know that ruminant livestock such as beef and dairy and others produce greenhouse gases such as methane. The question is how significant, how great an impact is that on the overall changing climate? We've done a lot of research over the years quantifying those impacts, and now we have a really good feel for what the contribution of the dairy sector is on the nation's greenhouse gases. In the United States, these impacts amount to 2%. So 2% of all greenhouse gases in this country stem from the dairy sector. And globally, all U.S. sources, everything we do in this country combined, equals 12% of the total global greenhouse gases. 11 of the 12% is fossil fuel use in the U.S., and 1% is everything we eat in the United States. Half of that 1% is plant agriculture, the other half is animal agriculture. One thing that's really important to note is that not just have we, through groundbreaking research, found out what the contributions are, but we have identified ways to further reduce those emissions. US-wide by 25%, in California, 40%. These are pledges that are not just empty words, but they are already making progress. I think one of the, the aspects that people like to forget is that efficiencies in production, becoming more efficient on the one hand, is correlated to environmental footprint. When production goes up per animal, environmental footprint goes down. Because what it means is that we can shrink our flocks and herds and by doing so, we have fewer animals while still producing the same amount of product. We have been doing this for the longest time. We will continue to do it in the future. I have not seen any other dairy industry throughout the world that had a better environmental track record than the dairy industry in this country. A Holstein cow today here in the United States, they're the highest producing cows, the ones with the greatest yield. Those cows are so adaptable to different environments. So uh, to have cows that produce at a very high level in a way that is sustainable is uh, an important success story that the Holstein industry has. These farmers have one thing in mind, and that is to be the best steward of the land they can be. Because they are not just doing this for themselves and for their family today, but they want to hand this place on to their kids and to their grandkids. They do it because they want to work on the legend that they leave behind.